Okay, so now we're going to have a look at rational functions, um, and specifically in uh, standard level IB, uh, you only really see rational functions are in this form here, uh, AXB over AX plus B over CX plus D, uh, i.e. Uh, a linear function over another li linear function. So uh, even though we do have uh, a linear function on the top and bottom, uh, these will not be straight lines. And in fact, pretty much every rational function uh, is uh, curved in nature on your graph. And uh, so these have uh, specific properties and we'll go through them now uh, through an example. I think that's the easiest way of doing it. Okay, so this is our example. Uh, can we graph y equals 4x plus 3 over 2x minus 8? Okay, so well, I'm just going to tell you that there are going to be there's going to be a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. Okay, uh, a vertical asymptote, or just asymptotes in general, are these uh, imaginary lines that our graph will get infinitely close to. Okay, as it keeps going. So here, this example, this red line will keep getting closer and closer, infinitely close to our dotted line, uh, but we'll never touch it, we'll never cross it. Um, and same thing in the horizontal direction, as you would imagine. Okay, it's not actually a line that is included in our function, okay, but we might mark it on the diagram. Um, as indicating that our graph will get, again, infinitely close to the line, but never cross it. Okay, and so these types of functions have both vertical and horizontal asymptotes, uh, and you'll see why in a second. Okay, so starting off with the vertical asymptote, okay, and if our line is um, not going to cross a vertical line, not going to touch an imaginary vertical line, um, that's almost like saying uh, which x value um, cannot be on this graph. Okay, um, almost like finding the domain of a function. Okay, which uh, x value is not in the domain? Um, well, uh, that will tell you where the vertical asymptote is. So, looking at this function, um, when you did domains. Okay, there are various things that might restrict the domain, like doing square roots of negatives. Okay, but another thing was uh, when you had when you were dividing by zero. Okay, you cannot divide by zero; that would be undefined. Okay, so uh, our denominator is two x minus eight. Okay, so when would that equal zero? When would the denominator equal zero? Well, we could set it equal to zero. Okay, and solve. 2x minus uh, 2x equals 8, so x equals 4. Okay, or uh, more accurately, x cannot equal 4. Okay, um, so our, our graph will never cross that line, and we'll never touch that line, but we'll get infinitely close to it in, in both directions. Uh, then the horizontal asymptote. Okay, so this is a, a y value that's never going to be on our graph. Um, so basically, something that the whole function can never equal. Okay, um, whatever x we choose, there there is going to be one y value that it's just not possible to get. Okay, and one quite simple way of finding this is to start plugging in very big values of x, okay, because it turns out that very large values for, for x um, are the ones that will get you really close to the asymptote. Um, so if I plugged in 10, for example, um, I would get 43 over uh, 12, and that would be 3.58 roughly. Okay, if I plugged in 100, I would get 403 over 192, 
and that would be roughly 2.1 if I plugged in 10,000 even um, you can maybe start to see a pattern now because this is just 2.00095 um, then well you can imagine uh, you could try a million and it would be 2.000 many zeros uh, but never quite exactly zero. Uh, now I can just say, well, infinity almost. Um, it's basically going to be roughly two. Or uh, if we actually plug in a proper number, we would never get two. Um, we would always be slightly above it. But for now, it would be fine just to say uh, two. Okay, and that will be our horizontal asymptote. Okay. Um, the next thing is uh, the shape. Uh, I can just tell you, or you could find out through trial and error, um, or just trying, sorry, trying a few of these examples. You'll see eventually that they either have this shape or this shape. Okay. Um, now, what you can do is, well, you might want to make sure that you've just got the right one. Um, now, if you've done something like this, uh, well, all you need really is one point on the graph, and you will immediately know which shape it is. Okay, if you if you find a point on your uh, graph and it's here, for example, then it will be in this quadrant, so it'll, our graph will look like that, or neater. Uh, okay, or if you find a point and it's here, then your graph will be here and here. Okay, but we found some points already. We found that uh, when x equals 10, y equals 3.58. Um, so that might be around there, or a bit higher. Um, but this question would just be to sketch, so I'm not too concerned. Okay. Um, not the nicest looking one, but that'll do for now. Um, and, well, I could just draw a rough line for this one, uh, or what we could do is find the y-intercept, maybe. I could plug in zero. Okay, so if x was zero, I'd be left with just three over minus eight, or negative three eighths, which is just around there. That's probably just about good enough. Uh, I could also find the uh, the x intercept by setting y equal to zero, and then all that would do would be involve it would involve uh, solving four x plus three equals zero, which would be negative three quarters. So maybe the x intercept would be around there actually. Okay, uh, but that would be perfectly sufficient. Um, and one other thing that they really want you to do is label the asymptotes uh, with x equals 4, y equals 2. Okay, And if one of the previous parts of the question is find the equation of the asymptote, do not just write 4 or 2. Okay, and If it asks for an equation, you have to give an equation. Okay, So the equation for a vertical line is x equals some number, like x equals 4. The equation for a horizontal line needs you to put y equals some number, like y equals 2. Okay, and maybe just label the function. And that is perfectly fine for now. Okay, <coughs> so uh, we can just summarize uh, how we can find the vertical asymptotes and horizontal asymptotes quickly. Um, so I could say for vertical asymptotes that um, you can solve for uh, for when denominator equals zero. For horizontal asymptotes, I could say plug in very large x value. Okay, and that those would be sort of uh, informal uh, rules for finding those. Um, I could actually also give proper uh, formulas there. Okay, so 
if I'm solving the denominator equal to zero, and I've got uh, this general uh, way of writing these rational functions, that's solving cx plus d equals zero. Okay, and if you solve that just with c and d, you get uh, that x should equal minus d over c. Okay, and for the horizontal asymptote, um, well, how do we, where did that number two come from? Um, well, the fractions I was doing every time were things like 403 over 192, or 440,003 over 19992. Um, so essentially, uh, this ratio comes from the four and the two. Okay, and then it's just this, uh, this addition and subtraction of a constant that makes it so that uh, it can never exactly equal 4 over 2. Uh, but it's also always going to get very close to 4 over 2. Or in other words, it's going to get very close to A over C. Okay, so the horizontal asymptote is actually always going to be A over C. But the, the graph can never equal A over C. Uh, I'll touch that line because of this plus D and plus B. Okay, uh, so now that we've got these rules, we can do one more example. Okay, let's say we have uh, g of x equals 5x plus 6 over 6 minus 2x. Um, so firstly, uh, let's do the vertical asymptote. Solve um, for when the denominator equals 0. Okay, it's been switched around the order slightly, it doesn't matter. Um, if we solve this, we get x equals 3. Okay, and remember to label it nicely. Uh, now horizontal uh, asymptote. Uh, now I might just, I could plug in big numbers again. Let's say 10,000, uh, I'd get 50,006 over negative 19994, okay, which is roughly uh, minus 5 over 2, minus 2.5. Okay, or I could go straight to doing A over C. Now, don't be tricked by this change in order. This would be our C here, yeah, minus 2. Okay, so y equals a over c would be y equals 5 over negative 2, or negative 2.5. Okay. Alright, and then... Uh, let's uh, another way of finding which shape it is, which quadrants to do your lines in, um, would be to find the the y intercept. Okay, that would be a good way of giving one point to use. Okay, so if x was zero, we'd have uh, six over six, one. Okay, um, so we're in the the top left and bottom right quadrants. Uh, we know that that's the shape. Okay, try not to curve upwards at all, like I've kind of done there. Um, I would probably want to maybe redo that. Just make sure you're never... I'll do a better example of what you shouldn't do. Anything like that, okay, when I've, I've curved down here, that is not correct because as you know it keeps getting closer and closer to that horizontal asymptote okay and I could label this g of x I could label this 0 1 maybe uh, I've labeled my asymptotes so I am done